In 2016, New York became the final state to legalize mixed martial arts, a move seen by many as the final piece to legitimizing the sport in the U.S. Despite this, the move to the Big Apple has had its shares of mishaps and scandals, and in today's episode, we'll look at some of the biggest examples. Welcome to the INC, and these are five of the worst blunders by the New York State Athletic Commission. Daniel Cormier is considered one of the nice guys of MMA, but his antics in 2017 set him firmly in the role of villain. At UFC 210, Cormier defended his light heavyweight title against Anthony Rumble Johnson. Cormier was vocal about his struggles making light heavyweight, and those issues resurfaced when he weighed 1.2 pounds above the 205 pound weight limit. Cormier was given a second chance to weigh in using a towel, but was seen leaning with his hands on the towel in an effort to redistribute his weight, dropping 2 pounds in just over 3 minutes. Remarkably, the NYSAC missed Cormier's indiscretion and allowed the fight to continue, with Cormier winning a one-sided match by second round submission. The NYSAC appeared to learn their lesson, changing their rules on weigh-in etiquette and clapping down on any attempts to deceive the scale, as Bellator fighter Sergio De Silva found out prior to his match with Matt Rizzo. We'll see you in the scale. No, just your feet are down. You gotta yep. put your feet down. Hey, both feet. Down. Weight, weight bearing, both feet. Right. Both feet on the, his feet on the ground. Okay. Pearl Gonzalez was the subject of unwanted scrutiny at UFC 210. Gonzalez was set to make her company debut against Cynthia Calvillo, but was pulled from the card after the State Athletic Commission raised concerns over her breast implants. The confusion came through an interpretation of the rules. The unified rules didn't feature guidelines concerning implants, so the NYSAC applied their boxing rules, which outlawed them in the state, despite letting other enhanced fighters compete at previous New York events. After last minute negotiations, the fight was restored to the card, Gonzalez losing by third round submission and later admitting the controversy affected her preparations for the fight. Uh, I, I thought I did the best that I could to, to kind of put that to the side, but I realized today after the outcome of the fight that I could have done a lot more to stay focused and, and, and uh, completely have that tunnel vision for that fight. A similar situation occurred at Fight Night Utica when Jessica Aguilar was pulled from her match with Jody Esquibel due to having chapped lips after her weight cut. The fight was rescheduled to Fight Night Boise, with Aguilar claiming her first UFC win by unanimous decision. The UFC isn't the only promotion that's been hampered by the NYSAC. In 2018, the World Series of Fighting was rebranded as the Professional Fight League, with the company holding its first event at the Hulu Theater in Madison Square Garden. Plans for the show, however, were hampered at the weigh-ins, when the NYSAC cancelled a heavyweight match between Kevin Tiller and UFC veteran Alex Nicholson. Despite competing in the same weight class, the NYSAC ruled the match between 215-pound Nicholson and 265-pound Tiller breached their health and safety rules, which outlawed fights with a 25-pound weight difference between two opponents. Not that this was ever an issue with MMA promotions in the past. The ruling forced the PFL to change its fight card hours before the event, with Tiller facing Brazilian Caio Alencar and Nicholson making spectacular work of a short notice Jake Hune. Oh! oh! Holy oh! God! Oh my God! That, that just happened! The show was further hampered at the weigh ins when heavyweight fighter Sean Jordan was pulled from the card due to weighing 9 pounds above the 265 pound weight limit. If only he had a towel. UFC 208 is considered one of the worst pay-per-views of all time and the NYSAC's intervention in the main event only made things worse. In the card's headliner, Jermaine Durandamy fought Holly Holm for the first women's featherweight title. After an even first round, the fight exploded into controversy after Durandamy threw a right hand that rocked Holm after the horn. Oh! Oh no! Uh, that was after the bell. That was late. That, that was, was late and yeah. it was hard. The punch was largely seen as an accident, until Durandamy repeated the trick five minutes later. Oh man, she hey. did it again! Take a point He's away! He's got to! He's got to! You gotta He's take got a to. point away! He's got to! Todd Anderson, an NYSAC official with little big match experience, chose not to penalize Durandamy, a move that proved crucial as the Dutch fighter won a unanimous decision 48-47. Anderson's failure to deduct points denying Holm a rightful draw in the process. Holmes' team attempted to get the result overturned days after, only for the case to be thrown out and Durandamy being allowed to retain her belt. One she'd be stripped of anyway, rendering the whole thing pointless. 
The worst example of NYSAC interference came at UFC 223. The Brooklyn card was beset with problems, with Tony Ferguson dropping out of the main event and Conor McGregor's attempt to make dolly throwing an Olympic sport. But a match between Max Holloway and Khabib Nurmagomedov had all the makings of a classic. The day of the weigh-in, Holloway was pulled from the card after the NYSAC raised concerns over the safety of his weight cut, forcing the UFC to scramble for a last-minute replacement in a bid to save the card. After Anthony Pettis turned down the fight, the UFC turned to Paul Felder, who'd won five of his past six fights and was considered one of the division's brightest prospects, only for the NYSAC to reject the match due to Felder being outside the UFC rankings. Eventually, New York real estate agent and 11th seed Ally Quinta was drafted into the match on 24 hours notice. The disruptions didn't harm Khabib, who dominated a one-sided match and claimed the UFC lightweight title in the process. 223, however, did have a happy ending, as Iaquinta's performance earned him a match with division prospect Kevin Lee, with Al claiming an upset win and a place in the lightweight top 5. And now, time for a few honorable mentions. The UFC's first New York show wasn't without problems, with Yoel Romero given a two-month suspension for over-celebrating his win over Chris Weidman. Brock Lesnar's play fight with Daniel Cormier led him to being banned from attending UFC 230. The NYSAC became the first commission to disqualify fighters for defecating during a match. To this day, they're still the only commission to ban people from beating the shit out of each other. This is the INC, and thank you for watching. New York, I love you, but you're bringing me down.